Well, morning, guys. I'm busy checking out all your comments here on Facebook. Oh, man. Yeah, we're back. I know. Like, where have you been? I missed you. You didn't write. You didn't phone. You didn't send messages. You didn't send presents. <laughs> I missed you guys. <laughs> it's like, like, so let me tell you the true story. I was like, last week, we're like, okay, build is live, got to get like sorted. So came into the studio. Well, 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 you know what happens when you go into a space that you kind of haven't been into for a little while. And so it ended up being one of those slash and burns. So the entire studio, garage included, got just trashed. And I mean trashed. So that was my Saturday and Sunday, but new shelves are up, looking neat. I think I know where everything is in what drawer. But yeah, yeah. So it's been lovely preparing and getting ready. And gosh, guys, you're all here. Good morning. Um, Numia, it's the first time you're joining a live. Oh, good job, guys. How hot is it out there? How hot is it? Um, Renard, good morning. Aisha, good morning. Um, Marilyn from Port Owen in the West Coast. Oh, wow. Okay, Felicity uh, from Ganubi. Oh, Ganubi's nice. Um, Patricia, good morning from PE. Valerie from Randburg. Um, Siba Siso, good morning. Um, Molly, good morning. Uh, gosh, guys, Ruth, True Body. That's an interesting surname. Ready and waiting for another super show. Good morning from a beautiful Cape Town. Oh, yeah, we're coming there soon. We are coming there soon. There's a Builders. Builders Live. We're doing the Masterclass, the Builders Masterclass. Um, and uh, that is in Constantiaburg. But keep an eye out on the Facebook page because we will let you know. Um, Michelle Scott, we missed you. <laughs> good morning, Terry Lee. Um, Kathy, good morning from a hot Lone Hill. Yeah, it's a hot baby. Um, whoa, uh, from a sweltering leisure bay. Tess, good morning, guys. It's lovely to see you all with us. It is a cracker. This is summer. If you didn't think it was ever going to arrive, well, hello, everybody. She are here. Um, today we're expecting a 38-39. Um, Cape Town has been experiencing equally stinkers of days. I believe they're getting a bit of rain today. Guys, Cape Town. Who's Cape Town? Cape Town? Have, are you having any rain? Is it overcast? Tell me, tell me. Because then you need to be dancing. Um, uh, let's see, Betty's Bay. Um, no, come guys, who's there? Um, oh, there's Tracy Pinto. Morning from a hot hillcrest. Yes, Lana Nell. So, guys, anybody in Cape Town, tell me if it's raining. Um, I certainly do hope that it is. And we are going to hope for a cracker of a storm this afternoon. So, how do we start the new year? I know, guys. Oh, so we all went back to work. <laughs> how was that for you? Yeah. Mm. You said what? Oh, no, I can't repeat that on a builder's live. Never. Not allowed to say those words. But anyway, thank goodness for our gardens. Thank goodness for the people around us. And actually the rhythm of going back to work. There is something in it. Um, and, and yeah, the rhythm of going back to work to get your, kind of your own rhythm back, whatever that might be. But I will say this. I do think that the world, and I kind of get it. Yeah, the world is in turmoil. It's upside down. So if you've been feeling a little bit like off, sideways, left, not too sure what's cooking. I, I get it. Um, there's a lot of stuff that's going on out there. But one thing I do know for certain, I do know this for certain, that if you are feeling like that, the best way to get grounded is to sit yourself on the lawn with your bum, your bum on the lawn, your derriere on the lawn. Look at your garden. I had a look at it two weekends ago and I was most upset. Um, the, the heat and the humidity has made things explode. Um, I literally got in there and slashed and burned. Guys, it's, it's a war zone out there. It, it seriously is. But um, I'm quite excited about what's going to come of it. So maybe in the next few months we'll get a, a little sneak peek there. Um, 
Let's have a look here. Oh, cool in Cape Town today. There are Peter. Thank you. Peter Johnson. Hallelujah. Um, after a bit of overnight rain. Yes. Yes, yes. Um, uh, Jillian. Jillian, good morning from Pine Town. Ruth, cool 22. Oh, are the angels spitting? You said spits of rain. I call it the angels spitting. Just enough to dirty the windscreen of a car. <laughs> <laughs> okay, guys, we're talking about trends. Oh, caramba. Oh, let me not get started on this. Trends and gardening, guys, it, it, it's very, very much on the same kilter that we've been feeling these, these energies, these words. We've been learning about them. We've been learning about rewilding. If I have to hear that word one more time, I might just have to projectile vomit somewhere. Um, I'm so over that word. Um... But there are definite trends that are pushing through and you, you yourself are going to recognize them. You, you will recognize them. Whether you do not even read a gardening magazine, true story. Uh, whether you're just looking at a pamphlet, whether you're scrolling on social media, uh, whether you're just having a conversation with someone, you will notice these things. You will notice them. And I'm not even going to talk about the color of the year though because Yo, I have a serious problem with the colour of the year. I don't know what it is, but I, I'm going to just stick with green. Um, but I'm not going to that funny outwashed, washed, whatever, nectarine thing, tangerine it was. I mean, it's like, it's dreadful. Oh, there we go. It's called peach fuzz. Yeah, it is fuzzy. It's, it's, it's fuzzy. Fa, fuzzy. It's very fuzzy. Yeah, they, they're writing, um, yes, I know pastels in. They're busy writing there and telling me what I'm going to say to you. Pastels in. Yes, I know pastels in, but I don't like peach. Pish, pish, pish. Anyway, besides the colour, which we're not going to go into, I've already told, I've already told my people at Builders that I really, really have a problem with the colour of the year, but they didn't choose it, guys. It's these other people. I don't know, maybe the fourth dimension or something, or the black hole. I don't know. Anyway, um... In gardening, we are seeing definite trends coming through, definite, definite. And you're going to say to me, well, what does that matter to me? Why should I be bothered? You should be bothered. You should be bothered. Because in these trends, with it, come loads of wisdom. They draw the trends from big words like climate change economy, global influence. What's that other thing? The cost of living. All of those come into this big melting pot and create what we are seeing. Awareness, the awakening of nature, the protection of the ice caps. Yes, even in your little garden in Pretoria, you can make a difference. And that global awareness is where all of this is coming to you. And when I start talking to you about it and start giving you the breakdown, and I'm not going to give you woo-woo stuff, guys. I am not going to, because I am not woo-woo. I am not going to tell you to go and um, take out all the lawn so that you've got nowhere to go and, and play with the ball with the dog and just sow a meadow. I'm not going to tell you things like that because that is not practical. You know, um, yes, certain parts of your garden, 100%, but I am not going to tell you to remove all your paving, especially those that go up to your front door because you've got to let the water seep through. There's going to be nothing radical like that. It's going to be, let's focus on what these movements, these thoughts, these global thoughts are, and how do we bring them into our gardens? I, for one, am very excited because, as I said, I did slay. At the same time, you know when you start pruning? <laughs> Come on, guys. <laughs> you know how it goes, hey? You start pruning. You're like, you start pruning like 8 in the morning, 12 o'clock. You bend your back, you lift up, you know. Your, your position has been bent over. You get up and you're at the end of the garden and you turn around behind you and there is seriously like an Arnold Schwarzenegger war zone behind you. It's not cars that are being dumped and boom, boom, boom. No, it's like your garden. But what happened is it went further. So I'm drawing inspiration from all of this 
and the changes are going to come. So let's get straight into it, guys. But who else is here? Um, Shan, good morning. Good morning, Shan, from YouTube, from Howick. Hot, hot in Howick. Yes. Um, search for peace. Um, oh, no, don't worry about all those things. We'll get back to you later. Oh, no, you complicate. Oh, you're making my head spin. So dizzy when it's so hot like this. Don't ask such, can't be overcomplicating gardening. Okay. Um, but it, just a big welcome to you guys. Uh, morning, Wendy. Uh, Felis is here. But my partner removed all the grass before I moved in. What was wrong with them? Hi, Bo. Did you have an argument? I don't know. I'm just asking for a friend. Um, uh, oh, my goodness. Oh, wait. Zanodine. Oh, what an interesting name. Zanodine says, OMG, my parents removed all of the grass. Sorry, this is an aging thing. Sorry, I'm going to say this. Ma Opa, Ma Opa, and I've seen it in many other gardens. If he could concrete anything, it got concreted. And it got any, any piece of concrete or, 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 or a tap or anything that was get, got left got painted with that um, red oxide. Red oxide got painted everywhere. I'm surprised that I never got painted. But my opa put it all over, all over. But please do not concrete. Yes, I am going to tell you, do not concrete everything. Because when it rains, <laughs> down, where does all that water go? Now it takes the bank away. And your foundations. Yeah, we've seen it. We've seen it. Right. Let's get on to it. Guys, the first one is Edimentals. Edimentals. No, that's not a band, guys. <laughs> I love laughing at my own jokes. Because <laughs> nobody's here to laugh with me. Edimentals. What does that mean, guys? It's not the, the mental part. Yeah, we, I'm with you. I, I get you. I get you. Ed, edimentals. This is about taking plants that would normally be ousted, put in a box, you belong in the herb garden, Basil. No, Basil is a plant. Basil is a perennial. Echinacea. Oh, we can only plant that over there because, you know, it helps with the flu. Guys, you've got to crush, I don't know how many hundreds of flowers in order to draw an essence out of it. Let's put the time in the herb garden. Get over yourself. Just like we name people and just like we put people in boxes, because I know that you do. Oh, what a nerd. Oh, what a loser. Did you, did you see the way he spoke to his wife? I'd hit him. Losers, winners, nerd, OCD, computer geek, just downright rude. The same we do for plants. You're a tree, you're a herb, you're a herb, you need to be in the herb garden. You're a vegetable, you only need to be there. And we have these boxes, my goodness, just like take extra pills or something. But let it go, okay? Just let it go. So, edimentals, come along here. Edimentals mean we are taking things that are normally ousted to the veggie garden because that's where they belong. We are now incorporating them into our flower beds. Guys, move your cheese. If not, I'm going to move it for you. Come on, come on. So let's have a look. Let's have a look at what we got. Okay, um, Mason, you're going to have to like cruise around here. So first of all, shame. We picked this this morning from the bottom bed, that the one that I didn't... Um, the only one that I didn't really denude. Um, and this is a beautiful comfrey. Now, guys, now this we know. This is wild. This is a child that has not had his medication for at least three days and is now bouncing off the walls. Comfrey is one of the most amazing perennials that is a herb. And when you have got one, you will have it forever. I promise you, it will come up all over. It will just multiply. This is a beautiful 
dark pink. The bees just love it. They love it, love it. And remember, when we're talking gardening, I always talk to you about textures. So look at these beautiful leaves. Take a look at that. He's a monster, okay? I'm an absolute monster. And what do we use this plant for? Well, not only does it look gorgeous, the bees love it. It can cope in really cold temperatures. You can prune it back in the night, in the day, in the heat of summer. Um, you can prune it any day. You will not kill it, I promise you. And when I say pruning, you take the head here and you just go, oh. okay, it will come back. So, why is it a good plant? So many reasons. You can make tea out of this, a plant food. Yes. You take the leaves and you just lie them down like this and they turn into the most amazing mulch. They also help for the snails. Ooh. Ooh. Okay. Plus, when we take anything with a broad leaf, stay where you are, Mason. I'm just going to quickly zoot along here and come back with example A. If we've got a salvia in the background, a normal salvia, this is black in bloom, black in bloom. Beautiful salvia. Imagine if we had this comfrey plant next to it. Okay, not looking so, so poorly um, dehydrated. But do you see? Those are the leaves. Big leaves, small leaves. So that's what we're getting. And yes, it's incredibly tough. So plant it. Um, our other options that we are looking at here, and, and I'm going to go through them because they really are very, very simple, but we, we fail to acknowledge them. Um, so, I'm going to start with what we call underfoot. That instead of putting boring old mondo grass, I shame you know, ach nee. No, pull it out, darling, pull it out. You could rather go with something like beautiful oregano. Low, flat, lovely, when you walk on it. Oh, mm, yummy, yummy, yummy. Plus, you can use it. It's got multiple uses. The same goes with mint. If you've got a wet patch in the garden, a boggy patch, remember mint, and it's kind of weird. People think that mint enjoys shade. It doesn't. Mint needs full sun. Plant some mint because when mint flowers, it's also beautiful. And your options are endless from the normal mint. This is your normal common garden mint. Oh, just smell. It is so fresh. We need an app in the cameras so you can smell. Um, where are these clever people with apps? Listen, they can make emails and pictures disappear into these things that go through the air. Why can't we smell something? Tech team, you better get on that. This is apple mint. I love apple mint because it really is apple mint. Beautiful and G and T's or your O-Ross and stuff like that. And this is, of course, a pan apple mint, which is the variegated, stunning, spectacular. Plant them, guys. Only one word of caution when you plant it in your garden beds. Plant this first into... Doo -doo 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 -doo. I'm looking for it, I'm looking for it. And I'm probably not going to find one, but I'm going to find it. Never mind. Plant this first. So you take your mint. Okay? Take your mint. L look at it. Look how excitable this creature is. Look at that. Look at it. Oh! It's like waiting to burst, waiting to get out of here. So you take it, guys, and all I want you to do is plant it with normal potting soil into a bigger container, a plastic pot, just a normal plastic pot, okay? Plant it into a plastic pot. Oh, look, throw the plastic pot. Ha-cha! Plant it into a plastic pot. da -dang. okay? And then you bury this plastic pot in the garden. And that way, your mint will never get out of hand. Never, 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 because it stays contained. All right, or else you'll find it coming up in your bedroom or something. No, not really, but you, yeah. okay, so you're just going to plant it and then bury it. Works really well. The most giving, amazing plant, beautiful nasturtiums. This is um, the little ice nasturtium, which has got the variegation on its leaves. Uh, whether it's used as just for its flowers, whether you want to use the leaves to make a pesto, um, whether you're wanting to take the actual flowers and turn that and smash it into butter to get that nutty taste, it's an amazing little filler. 
it's a great filler plant for your front garden. So plant it, for goodness sake, plant it. It's about taking the space that we have and using plants that we might not have thought about ever because it was relegated to the veggie garden. These over here, I mean, you couldn't ask for anything more. This is a perennial basil. Guys, sacred basil, it's also known as. Uh, those of you, it's got the most amazing licorice smell. It's like insane. Bees go mad over it. They're like bzzz, early in the morning. Um, and it's fantastic. And you can't kill it as well. If you want to prune it, you literally just prune it hard and it'll come away again. And it's a beautiful plant. So that's when we're talking edimentals, guys. And I haven't even gone to um, some of the times yet. Um, that thing's just going to fall over. But some of the beautiful thymes, this is a, um, a lemon thyme, a variegated lemon thyme, which also lovely in the foreground, great in rock gardens, and of course has so many beautiful culinary uses. So uh, there we're showing you a whole range, and one of my most favorite, which we actually have growing in amongst the roses in the rose garden, is pineapple sage. Pineapple sage gets to about a meter. This is its flower. Um, guys, you cut it back ruthlessly. The sunbirds love it. And of course, it's a beautiful sage. So, oh, sweet, sweet, sweet nectar. Oh, when last did you do that? <laughs> Pineapple sage, plant it. Guys, they give you flowers. Goodness, they give you beautiful flowers. So, yeah, that's when we're calling edimentals. And the last thing I want to tell you is when we think of creepers, when we think of a creeper to go over our pergola or whatever we're wanting or to give a bit of shade in the hot summer, do we think of an edible? No. No. No again. So why not take something like a Catawba grape um, this is a Catawba grape. It's the black grape. Um, it is a bit bitter. I'm going to tell you that whatever you do, do not eat the skin. Just pop it into your mouth because it tastes way better. Um, but when we're thinking of climbers, should we not be thinking about that? Yeah. Okay. Food for thought. Anyway, um, that's when we are talking edimentals. And I, I really, I love that word. I think it is a wicked word that is is going to take you and your gardening experience just to something slightly different. Now, remember, with that are going to come seeds, but I'm not going to start messing in that right now because I'm going to jump to the next one, which is not called rewilding. Um, because like I said to you, if I have to hear that word, it reminds me of that movie, The Wildlings, or no, what was that on? That was on Game of Thrones. The Wildlings. <sighs> they were cooked, man. They were cooked. Okay, so we're not doing that. We're calling it naturalistic planting. Oh, oh what a lovely word, hot potato. Naturalistic planting. What does that mean? What is naturalistic planting? What it basically means is we're taking a picture in our heads of what a hillside looks like, what a meadow looks like, and we interpreting it with plants that we know are going to perform. And whether you choose a corner in your garden, whether you choose an area at the bottom where you don't often go to, or whether you make this your front garden, is neither here nor there. But just find a place. Because this is where we get to see nature at its best. Because once we get these plants in this environment, they start creating their own microclimate, their own biome. Um, and eventually, what we call succession planting just happens. And, and it's called self-seeding, it's called volunteers. There are a whole lot of weird things that happen there. But to demonstrate to you very simply what this naturalistic planting is. Um, I want to show you this combination. And guys, this is from a, a section of the garden uh, where we've got most of these actually growing. It's, it's called, we call it the, um, the grass garden. But yeah, the grass gardens, they, they, they're kind of still there, but mm, they've got slightly different names now. So look what we've done. 
This is naturalistic planting. Okay, so here we've got a beautiful penicetum grass. Look at these plumes. I mean, come on. Is this not a hot blonde? Look at that. Hey? And here we've got pe penicetum rubrum, which is the non-invasive alien one, which has got these beautiful plumes that the birds love. Naturalistic planting is a form of gentle, soft planting, where we are combining perennials, annuals, bulbs, herbs, and seeds. And plants that do exceptionally well in these gardens are plants like the echinacea. Just look at that combination. I mean, isn't it wicked? And if we put a little indigenous helichrysum next to it with its soft furry leaves, isn't that gorgeous? Can you see that palette unfolding? It's just so, so lovely. And then, to top it all off, when we are starting this garden or when we are planting it, okay, what's going to happen is the helichrysum is going to set seed. Your Aristida, which is your indigenous grass, is also going to set seed. So things will start moving and expanding. Plus then, this is the opportunity where you then start to play around with seeds in the spaces. Okay, and this is where it really gets fun. So in here, coming up, if you haven't got your African daisy seeds, guys, you have to simply go out and buy them now because your African daisy seeds work beautifully in this garden. So imagine swirls of yellow. Okay, look here. Swirls of yellow around the helichrysum and around your grasses. Stunning yellow daisies. And all that you do is follow the instructions, dig the soil, throw them in, keep them watered, and ross. And when they are done, when they are done, all right, dried, done, <coughs> crispy things that are going to end up looking something like this. You're then going to go along, because these come out of my fridge. Um, you're going to go along and you're going to pick your seeds, and whether it's a carrot that you planted, true story, a carrot, you, you recognize this, yeah, you recognize this seed. This is of the Queen Anne's lace, and it's an all big flat open flower, but as it dries, it then starts curling in. And I collect the seed, pop them into here, and then we just go and scatter that seed the following season. Just scatter it. Nature takes care of itself, all right? And this has all been collected. All of these are from different parts of the grass garden and the perennial beds where we then, upon the next season, just throw them in and let it happen. And it's so nice. It's liberating, guys. It's seriously liberating. Other favorites of mine are the Californian poppies and, oh, where's it? Where's it? Where's it? Where's it? Ah, yeah, 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 yeah. Um, Water-saving mixes that you can just pop down, sow them into those areas, and then away you go. So, um, nice and easy, guys. And then I want to show you something else over here because this is fun. This is fun. This is fun. So um, I'm just looking for it here. I'm just looking. Oh, here we go. Here we go. Here we go. So it really doesn't matter, but I need to show you this. Okay. So Alison, stunning. Alison, spectacular. Just throw it in there. Just throw it in there, okay? Sweet peas, throw them in that wild garden. See what they do. They're going to creep along, okay? Um, and that is going to give you such a different look that it, it really, it's going to surprise you. And if you really want to take it one step further, and yeah, I'm going to move your cheese now. Seriously, I'm going to move your cheese, is to find a packet of, of grass seed, but you're not going to mow it. Guys, you're not going to mow it. You're going to throw this grass seed down and you're going to watch it grow. And you are just going to let it grow and grow and grow. Because when grass seed flowers, remember, when it flowers, we end up getting something spectacular like this, like the plumes. Okay, so try something different. 
That is all I am urging you to do. Uh, because you never know. It might just pleasantly surprise you. And in these areas of what we call naturalistic planting, bulbs must never be forgotten because they end up forming this own little biome. They will be protected and they will just pop up year upon year and simply surprise you. And when I talk about that, I'm saying particularly stick with your indigenous bulbs and you're going to see them in your local builders very, very soon. So your Ixias, your Tritonias, um, Freesias, those are perfect for in between those little pockets in your grass garden. Nice, nice, nice. Okay, right, next one. Preserving rainwater, guys, and I don't need to go on about this. Don't be doff. Seriously, um, we had so much rain uh, Early in the early in Jan, it, we didn't think it would stop. Oh, and then it did stop. No, uh -huh. yes, it did stop. And we have just had days and days of relentless, relentless heat. And it has been relentless, guys. Um, and when we talk about rain harvesting, there's another factor that I want to talk. It's twofold. So it's rain harvesting water harvesting, so it's holding your water, and there's a quick tip that I want to just share with you, um, because so many of us end up storing water, and then we're like, oh, it's smelly, yes, it's getting quite smelly, so we use this at home, it's, uh, it's a, for grey water and septic tanks, it's called Smell Away, guys, and apparently it's got like 23 different strains, I don't know, and they break down long protein chains of carbohydrates and terrible words like polysaccharides, lipids, and proteins. Don't worry about that, just pour it in. It's 100 mils into 120 liters. Pour it in and it takes the smell away. All right, so especially if you're storing water. However, what I really want to talk about on this is climate change. So if you've got an area in your garden, which you know when it, the water falls out the sky, because that's what we're finding now. We don't get nice little drizzles. We'll get no rain, no rain, no rain, no rain. Yeah. The tanks overflow, the gutters overflow, the manhole, the covers pop up. It's chaos. The taxis get swept down Jan Smuts Avenue. It happens, guys. It happens. And when it comes, it comes vus. All right. So if we know there's an area of the garden which when it rains, it always gets kind of flooded. It becomes boggy. It always stays damp. Um, and it really is badly drained, all right. Um, what I want you to think about there is why not create a rain garden? So a rain garden is the new buzzword, okay. The rain, rain gardens is what I want you to concentrate on. So rain gardens, come and have a look over here. How do we make a rain garden? Well, it's really easy because think about it. If we've got an area where it's going to be quite boggy, when we know that water is going to come down, we want to find plants that will cope and grow in the soil and enjoy waterlogged. So whether it actually dries out or not, or whether they are going to have their feet, their roots, in other words, in the water. So take an example here. These are a few water plants which can grow in the water as they are here. These we actually just yanked out the pond this morning. All right, because we pop them into the pond just like this. Um, so they can either grow in water or they can grow um, in an area which is quite boggy or even just normal soil. So if that waterlogged area, when it does drain out, will the plants still cope? Yes, they will. Yes, they will. So plants to look out for is one like this. It's called a chorus. It is lovely. I absolutely love it. Easy to divide beautiful yellow foliage, of course our good old faithful papyrus, and then alocasias, which can wonder and bedazzle. Um, and that will help you in forming a rain garden. Um, so it's an area which will be able to suck up all the excess moisture, stop excess runoff, curb the water that is going to be flowing across there in its torrents, and use it in a better way. Okay.
Does that make sense? All right. So this, we could do an entire talk just on this, guys, because there are, are truly so many options there. But just think about it. That's what I want you to do. Um, the, the next thing that I'm going to touch on now in terms of what are we talking about when we are coming to these trends. Oh, but hold on, what? I've got a question. Louise asks, oh, how do you get rid of weeds in a kukuya grass? What can she use? <clears throat> Louise, you can get rid of the weeds. I oh, know, they, they, they like really top the pops at the moment. Um, so what I want you to do is go along to your local builders and you will find in a section, they will be called herbicides, okay? Selective herbicides. They've got names like um, uh, weed all, um, uh, super lawn weeder, turf weeder. All right, those are the ones that you use in your lawn. Please, whatever you do, read the instructions. That pamphlet is there for a reason. So it's normally 50 mils into five liters of water that you dilute or that you spray over an area of 100 square meters. Okay, and you've got to do that three times. <gasps> very, very important. Okay, so do that. And what that does is it, it's selective, as it says. So it kills the weeds and not the lawn. Yay. Okay, um, search for peace. If your soil is 80% of sand and a pH of five, what can I improve my pH to? Oh, well, what, what can I use, I imagine? What can I use? A very good question. Very, very good question. You, number one, are going to be using this stuff. So this was taken from a few weekends ago. The um, Shredder and I had a very, very good Saturday afternoon together, uh, much to the delight of the neighbours, because mine is petrol and it makes a big noise. And, uh, and I made a whole lot. This was two weekends ago. Yes, true story. Two weekends ago, I made a whole lot of mulch, of everything that I'd pruned out of the front garden. And this is what it turns into. So it's been left in a pile, literally just left there, guys, and look at this beautiful stuff. Because mulch is adding the organic material into the soil, and that is literally just from everything that we pruned in the garden makes this beautiful stuff. Okay, so that is one way, definitely. And also because you've got sand. Guys, sand, the way to improve any sandy soil is by adding in organic content. And this is your best source of organic content. Okay, it's right out your own garden and it is for free. All you've got to do is put it through a shredder. Okay, and then take this and spread this all around the garden. Um, Renata asks, I've got a rose. Um, my garden is rocky. Can I plant it in a pot? Can you plant the rose in a pot? Oh, yes, please. Yes, you can. Just remember, roses have a surface root system. So get a big pot. Not one of these little 30 centimetre little jobs like this. Eh? I want it at least 40, 50, at least about that wide and about that high. So that's about 50 high as well. Um, make sure it's got good drainage and use a good quality premium potting soil in there and always mulch the top. Remember roses enjoy lots of water, guys. They need lots of water and in the pot, they're gonna need more. So make sure that you do keep it well watered, especially in, in the heat that we're having at the moment. Okay, um, Miranda asks, what kills the weeds and not the lawn? Answer the follows. Oh, I don't know. I don't know what she's saying here. Uh, what kills the weeds and not the lawn? It's, it's a selective, it, so it's, I don't understand the question. Yes. Oh, oh, Miranda, have you been killing everything? Oh, you poor sausage. Okay, Miranda, they, if you do not follow the instructions carefully, and when I mean do not follow, it's in that piece of paper that's inside the box, it says 50 mils, into five liters of water that must get sprayed over a hundred square meters. A hundred square meters is 10 big steps that way and 10 big steps that way and map it out. That is a hundred square meters. So when you are applying it with a pressurized spray bottle, not one of these, please, not one of, where is it? Um, give me one, please. Give me that spray bottle over there. Not there up top shelf. Um, 
when you are you when you go and you are buying this please invest in one of these guys um uh, you really you've you've got to get a, a pressure sprayer um this is a pressure sprayer guys this is not a pressure sprayer look it's so useless it even bust off there but these are one of these stupid little things that go pff, pff, pff. by the time you've done one square meter you've got cramp in your left hand finger and then you like then you've got two fingers on it and you're pushing the other finger and then you swap hands and you're really not good at it. It's actually just like, get over it. So uh, this is what you want, is what we call a pressure sprayer. There it is. You see, pressure sprayer, it gives it nice, oh, that's divine, <gasps> nice and cool um, and it spreads it over easily because if you apply it too dense, not over that 100 square meters, then your lawn will die as well. Okay, right, we've got to get moving because we've got more to show you. Right, that is, where were we? I don't know, I got lost there, sidetracked. Okay, anyway, let's talk, the, the next thing is give a bug. Do give a bug. Um, and these naturalistic gardens that you're gonna be creating is obviously to encourage wildlife in, to encourage the butterflies, all the different types of bees, um, to encourage that part into the garden because that helps divide those big corridors when butterflies need to move from one section to the next and it's more a holistic form of gardening and it has so many rewards uh, because as soon as your garden becomes the top coffee shop to visit for the insects you know what it's like mrs jones goes there she then tells trudy who's her yoga friend, Trudy also then goes there. And then Trudy tells Marlene or whoever that she's also got to go there. And all of a sudden, there's a whole family there and it's full. You know those coffee shops. Make your garden become that coffee shop. The stopover, butterfly approved, be approved. Okay, very, very important. So how do we do that? There are various ways of doing that, guys, but most importantly, I want to talk about the following. Um, we're going to mulch. Okay, we're going to mulch. When we mulch, we're protecting that top layer of soil. We're encouraging good life, earthworm life, and just a good microbial activity. We're also going to make little log mounds. Okay, and this we took off. So when we cut down some trees, or whether we've got some bits that we find, we take these and we, we just literally pile these logs up into an area of the garden. And this is just outside here around the corner. And look what starts happening. These were just pieces of wood. That's what they were. And look at them now. They have taken on their own ecosystem. There's a little spider. There's some beautiful moss. There's a fern that just grew here. There are a few little ants. Okay, remember ants don't eat plants. Please remember that. Black ants do not eat plants. They are harvested termites. That's a different subject altogether. Much, much bigger. But here is a little ecosystem that's going on. And trust me, when you have this, well, you're going to have the cool little lizards that come along and try and eat these. You're going to have a place for the bees to go and lay their eggs. You're going to have a place for all those little hohos that are going to need a place, a hidey hole. And you've made it right here in your garden. I love it. I just love it. Okay, so together with that, all right, and if you don't have a big enough garden to be able to put logs and stuff in there, then I'm going to show you the other way that you can do it. Now, of course, birds. The more you feed them, the more they need. <laughs> and you know, people put up bird feeders and they say, oh my gosh, the, the birds aren't coming, the birds aren't coming. You'll think about where you're putting the bird feeder, guys. First of all, the bird feeder needs to get put in a space where the birds can perch, feel safe from the cat, and then from there be able to go to your, your water bowl or the bird feeder. So consider that because it is so important. Um, put it there, keep the seed fresh. Don't ask me about the monkeys. Um, uh, because I'm not going into that department, but use your bird seed because also when that bird seed falls, underneath that, that bird seed will grow. It will then flower and seed because remember, that's where they got the seed from in the first place. Funny that, huh? Hey? Didn't come out of a packet. Yes, 
And then the birds will be encouraged to go there. So do you see that biome that is being created? So we feed into it, and then from there, it basically feeds itself. Okay, a few more questions. Um, uh, Zanadine asks, my new cycad leaves have been eaten by leopard. Ble oh, it's been around. Leopard moth caterpillar. What can I use without damaging the leaves? Okay, you're pretty safe on that one. There are loads of products out there that you can use. So um, I'm going to give you some options over here. So being talking about what we can use that is safe, that is safe for us, for the environment. Margaret Roberts Organic Insecticide will do the job, um, guys, and Organicide Plus will also do. This is basically garlic, canola oil, and oh, you'll know it's garlic. Um, and pyrethrum, which is from the chrysanthemum plant, that will also do the job. Um, and it won't hurt the leaves, but spray it early morning or late afternoon, okay? And that will sort it out. Um, my orange lilies are being eaten by armyworm. Exactly the same thing, guys. Use this over here. Um, so it's the organic insecticide or the organicide plus. Either one of these are really safe to use, and uh, we use them loads in the garden. So go with that, and they do the trick. Okay. Okay. Are we going to do that? Oh, oh, oh. And by the way, oh, thank you. My um, um, uh, Minister of Home Affairs has just told me um, that uh, if you go on the Builders YouTube, we actually did a whole video just on that amaryllis worm, cycad worm, lily borer, lily borer caterpillar, whatever you want to call it, it is there. Um, so go onto the Builders YouTube channel, please, and have a look, and you will see the remedies there. Right. Now, if your garden's not big enough to put logs in, or you don't want your mother-in-law to trip over it, oh, gosh, um, then you can do the following. And we, uh, we do this around the garden, and we have loads of fun with it, guys, because it's a very simple thing. Um, and you've seen them. You've seen them on your... Instagram feeds or Pinterest or wherever you're on. You've seen them, you've heard them, you've liked them. Um, and what can I use? Renata asks, what can I use on tomatoes? Rose care, malisol. Yama, negative, negative. Renata, malisol has a long waiting period. Um, it, it, it really does have quite a long waiting period. So I would not... I would encourage you not to use that. Um, when I say waiting period, that means that you've got to wait so many weeks before it's safe to eat it. Makes you think, doesn't it? Yeah, okay. So um, on your tomatoes, um, I would use either a copper-based fungicide, okay, copper, as in normal copper. Um, and for hojos and nunus, I would use the Organicide Plus, okay. All right, there it is, nice and easy. Okay, so what is this thing that we do and how can we encourage it? And you've all seen it, you've all seen them. It's Bug Hotels, ah! I love them, I love them, I love them. And guys, this is, like, this is like a box of trash. This is literally a box of trash and you can build your own bug hotel. And um, we're using as the frame for our bug hotel is just a little, um, uh, a window box, a small little window box. I mean, it's it really is small. It's tiny. It's Nunu. And you can do this anywhere, guys, and your options are endless. Whether you're going to take a few little terracotta pots and you're going to put them there, and all we're doing is taking organic bits and adding them in because this encourages whether well, it's going to be the little solitary bees that are going to come make a house in here, whether it's the lizards. You go wild. And you could take some shells, and you can put some shells in here. And th there's no right or wrong way. Just use something organic. Um, oh, my gosh, this is the best part. Um, a broken terracotta pot. Been a day. And uh, you add these little bits in, because remember, terracotta keeps the warmth. Okay? Yes, it's clay. Okay, so when the bugs are needing... Um, and when we say bugs, we're talking friendly bugs here. Um, when they're needing somewhere to stay warm during the winter, guys, here they come here. Huh? They're going to live in there. Okay. Um, foo foos. <laughs> What's a foo foo? This is the best toy in our household. You can buy the most expensive toys for our dogs, but you give them the inside of a toilet roll, and it's called a foo foo in our house. And seriously, we've got to like. 
these came out of the cupboard because we've got to keep them. Because if they want a foo-foo and we don't have a foo-foo, there's trouble, big, big trouble in the household. So from little foo-foos here, you can put them there. What else have I got in here? Oh, uh, koya also works. Koya, that works nicely as well. And then you can, oh, even old pegs. You see, old pegs, wooden pegs. Anyone trying to hang up the washing today? <laughs> um, guys, I am using a pair of secateur, but this is my secateur. Look, it's all rusted. I've actually used spray paint over it because this is the secateur that I use for my DIYing that I shouldn't be using a secateur for. Bits of driftwood that we picked up along the beach. Um, and something that works really nicely is this because we've all got some of these lying around in the garden. And that is bits of bamboo, all right? And I love it because it's got the hole, obviously. So we take bits of bamboo and you're just going to cut a few pieces. There we go. And please, did you notice when I was cutting them that I did that first? Just swing it around and then cut through because yeah, if you try and just squeeze it, what happens is you actually crush the bamboo. Okay, just, yeah, quick tip. So you can put some of that in there. And then, oh, caramba, what else do I have in my bag of tricks here? Oh, so many things. More shells. Oh, I'm making such a mess. It's wonderful. And a few little log rolls, you know, that you've cut. There it is. Ah, oh, there, there. Gosh, isn't there a day coming up? Because I could give this away as a gift. It's really quite pretty. Um... And then maybe a bit of sphagnum moss even in here for a nice little Ed Blow uh, Sealyposteropedic bed um, for the bugs. And guys, that was uh, three minutes flat, how to build a bug hotel. Nice and easy. Done. Right. Okay. So the next thing is the trend that we're seeing, and I love it, I love it, I love it, because it's something that we've done all the time, and you might be doing it as well, it's called preserving gardens. Well, what does that mean? What is preserving gardens? I'm going to literally quickly just uh, wish over it because we're running out of time. Preserving gardens is taking what has finished and repurposing. It's this. It's taking one of the plumes from a palm and using it as a bit of ornamentation. It's taking the most amazing dried bits from your garden and keeping them in a space as an arrangement. Look at this, proteas, status, do you see? It doesn't lose its color. Look at the beautiful pods from the poppies from last year have been put in here. Grasses, leaves, Daiti pods. Isn't it gorgeous? That is called repurposing of gardening. And it goes one step further. Oh, Mason, come around this way. It could be making pressed flowers to make the season extend into the pages of your book. And it could be beautiful ferns that are some of the oldest living plants and genetic species in the world. And it could be a beautiful hydrangea that has just been picked and just thrown in there. And some bachelor buttons that form the most beautiful, organic, crunchy ornamentation, which takes gardening to the next level. Plus, it reminds us of what it used to be. Finally, guys, finally, it's about education. And believe you me, that is, called, that is a trend. Education is a trend. And... It is this, it is choose your sources wisely, choose them wisely. If you're going to seek inspiration in gardening, are you going to seek a website from the United Kingdom? Well, I know some of you do. 
follow your sources, be curious. Be curious to find the knowledge that you need as a gardener. Be curious just to read a bit further as to how to follow the instructions. Be curious to finish the loop, to know from whence a plant comes, to know if it's a perennial or an annual, if the birds will love it, if it will cope in the hot, dry summers of where I live or the cold, freezing winter temperatures. Educate yourselves, not with mindless scrolling, but with information that will make you a better person, with knowledge. Because knowledge, knowledge creates freedom. Freedom. Freedom in your garden, freedom for you to do what you want with confidence, and freedom to be the creator and the destiny of what you want your garden to be. So move your cheese, or else I'll kick it out the way. Come on, guys. This is the year to give it a bash. And if you're short on a little bit of inspiration, we've got just the thing for you. Is pop into your local builders when you're picking up your seeds and plants and all the others. A local source of gardening content, proudly South African, brought to you by yours truly and the amazing team that's behind me. It's called The Gardener and Detainee. And if you haven't seen them in your local builders, go and find the manager and tap them on the shoulder and say, Oi, where's my magazine? And of course, there's Bri, Grow to Eat, and all of these are filled pages and pages of amazing, credible content that can make you the gardener you've always wanted to be. Folks, please remember to also check out the Builders YouTube and the blog because there is loads of content, loads of content that can help you, whether it's about how to hang a mirror or screw in a light bulb or create a beautiful garden. It's right there. Till next time, guys. I hope to see you in the same time, in the same place. I've enjoyed my hour. I hope that you have. I don't know where it's gone, but it's flown by. Um, I've got to take my bug hotel and give it a home now. Um, and uh, till next time, take care of you and yours. God bless and happy gardening.